Alright, what's up guys? Uh, I figured I'd try and talk over the Basilisk Duo Shape review um, before I return the ones that I got off Amazon to try out. But uh, first of all, a small joke. So this is an ultimate. Um, I got a used one of these at the same time I got a new X Hyperspeed just to see if there was any meaningful difference between them. When I got this one out of the box, I was like, oh wow, this still has the plastic on the bottom. I'm shocked that somebody would uh, have decided that they didn't like this mouse even before having tried it, you know, properly on a mouse pad or for gaming or anything. And, and, and then I tested the scroll wheel. What the fuck? <laughs> so anyway, needless to say, I know I know why this one got returned. Um, <laughs> yeah, alright, anyway, uh, jokes aside, uh, let's talk shape. Um, so, I'm going to compare everything to the 518 because I'm a boomer, and I think this is the standard by which all mice of this type of shape are compared to. Uh, many of you are probably more familiar with this shape than this one, so... Sorry, uh, this video might not be that helpful to you, but this would also mean you've tried the Basilisk and you know what you think about it. Anyway, um, let's see. So the, the biggest things to me are that, uh, first of all, there's no ring finger ledge. Uh, so I run into the same frustration that I do with the Makalu and uh, with a bunch of other mice where they give you like no room at the front to put your ring finger so I'm like trying to rest it on the side of the right mouse button here but then as a result I'm like using two fingers to click right mouse which feels weird like it's like almost a one three one grip but not really um yeah anyhow and then the other major difference uh for me is the rear left so with the basilisk, and I noticed this was a similar feeling with the um, with the Myonix Naus. Um, so it's not like unique to this mouse in particular, but uh, there's this the way that this rear left is trimmed off. When I hold the mouse, try to hold it properly, so that, like the scroll wheel is pointing back towards my elbow, and you know the other things to try and keep the sensor lined up properly so it tracks straight. Um, it doesn't really touch like the back of my thumb or anywhere in here which I'm used to having some amount of contact there like for comparison with the 518 uh, this little bulge at the back of the thumb groove helps to fill up that part of my my hand and create some solid contact there so I'm able to kind of use the base of my thumb to push on the, the side of the mouse. And you get the same effect with the G703 because it's got that flare there that really locks into the base of your thumb. But uh, the Basilisk, despite having a big thumb, or thumb rest, doesn't do that. It, there's a gap in here. And so the only bit that touches is right here like the, the inside of the, the bone at the base of my thumb can just barely push on the back left of the mouse. And it, it works, but it, it sort of leaves me feeling like mostly the mouse is just touching the right side of my palm, and then I end up just mashing my thumb against the left side and trying to push it into the right half of my hand that like catches it. So it's, it really forces something that sort of feels in spirit like a pincer claw grip where I'm basically using my thumb to push the mouse that way and I'm using the whole, you know, pinky side of my hand here to try and sort of catch or brace it. Um, and it works, but it just doesn't provide it as much control from the palm as like a 518 shape does, nor do I feel that it's as comfortable. Um, the 
the good parts about this shape are basically the right side. It's not quite there. I wish it had a tiny bit more uh, flair with regards to pinky support, but you can get your, your pinky and the knuckle and everything nice and flush against this whole right side of the mouse. And it, it doesn't feel, um, it's not like the Cone Pro Air where there's a huge gap here that's just hard to adjust to. Uh, it's a much more natural shape on the right side to my mind. I just wish that it had better accommodations for people pushing their ring finger towards the front of the mouse because that seems to be what having a right side this smooth uh, is meant for. But for some reason they said, no, screw that, let's rob as much space from the, the front right of the mouse as possible by, by cutting the button down into there for no reason. So, I don't know. <laughs> whatever um more disagreements between me and razor's philosophy of how they design buttons for their mice and front right corners stupid death adder um the other thing that that frustrates me i basically have the same complaint about this rear thumb button that i do on the chakram the extra fi m4 uh, there's a bunch of mice like this where this rear thumb button very aggressively tucks in away from from where my thumb placement is and it makes it very difficult to actuate it by rolling my my thumb sideways like i have to move it far enough that it physically adjusts my grip and the tension of my hand on the mouse and it's it's hard to use it without it disrupting my aim the front one's okay uh, but yeah, this back thumb button is by no means my favorite. It is technically more serviceable than, uh, than like the M4 or the Chakram where they're really pulled high and out of the way, but it's not great. Uh, and it just, it just goes with this whole, um, back left being cut too narrow for my hands. Kind of a feeling, I guess. Other than that, um, the front end feels taller on the Basilisk because this left side is higher by comparison. Like you can see that the, the 518 is also tilted at its buttons, like it didn't just magically invent that characteristic out of nowhere, but um, the way that, that it curves down towards the front, the Basilisk just doesn't and so as a result if you have slightly longer hands like mine and you, you can feel the way that the front of the mouse is kind of curving away from you the basilisk doesn't do that at all it just keeps going in a straight line uh and so you end up being like as likely or more likely to push on these buttons with like the the inside of this first joint of your finger like this where I'm, I'm actually pushing on the button right here because it's easier to do that than trying to, to curl my fingers and push out here where you have like no contact with the mouse at all. So I don't know, by comparison, this just has a much more natural curvature uh, in terms of, oops, sorry, not only feeling uh, like it has a lower front end, and it's easier to steer the front of the mouse with my fingers, with these two fingers, but also just that it's it's easier and more intuitive to actuate the buttons in the way that I feel is, is natural, instead of being kind of pushed towards this weird palm grip where you push with the, the inside of your finger, I don't know, instead of the, the pad here on the end. I don't know, it's weird. I'm sure you could just adjust to it and learn to use this type of, of finger curl normal, but it just feels less intuitive to me. And obviously, I have to attribute a huge amount of that to having used this shape for an extremely long time, so I don't think that's really a fair criticism of the basilisk shape uh, in particular or, or directly. Um, but there is just a bunch of stuff on here these unnecessarily sharp front ends and other things it's like 
everything about this mouse still like the G502, it feels like it's a design that's stuck in, you know, 2016. And it's it's trying way too hard to be gamer um, without any real payoff for it, I guess, in terms of ergonomics, in terms of performance. I, I, I guess if you really need a third thumb button, you know, you can install your paddle on your Basilisk Ultimate and have a third thumb button, but I, I've never really liked the, uh, the, the sniper button anyway, so not a selling point to me. Uh, the other thing that I was really surprised to feel is that, um, is how narrow that this thumb groove feels. Like, I know it's not forcing my thumb to push, put pressure on the thumb switches and actuate them on accident, but I'm just really not used to feeling like, uh, simultaneously touching here and the buttons. Like, even on mice like the 518, there's enough space there that I'm not constantly touching the side of the thumb buttons. And on mice where I am, it's on, like, the 703 or the outset where there's no sculpture down here pushing my thumb up so that it kind of partially rests on the buttons. It's just barely touching them uh, to where I can roll onto them easily. The outset is the same way. Uh, as the 703. So it's it's got a weird kind of pinched feeling on for, on my thumb. Again, the main triggers are slightly awkward. It doesn't have a, a good place to rest my ring finger towards the front of the mouse, which again limits how effectively I can control the front of the mouse. Um, and it doesn't uh, do as good of a job of supporting the base of my thumb and feeling like it actually fits the shape of my hand. So overall, it's odd to me that this has become the sort of most popular shape of gaming mouse because I don't feel in any meaningful sense that it's an upgrade over the 518. I suppose it's one of those things where potentially a lot of people felt that the ring finger rest was awkward, which I can understand, but then there are mice like the 703 that get rid of it in a way which still gives you plenty of space to rest your ring finger against the side of the mouse and control it the same way if you want to. Um, having a bigger thumb rest, sure, why not, I guess, I don't really have anything against that. But the combination of that sculpture and this layer of rubber tape on it without the willingness to move the thumb buttons higher on the side really does kind of feel a bit cramped, I guess. And, um... The hump is a bit hard because it doesn't feel as good to me but I can imagine that this feels better to people with thinner hands. Um, and I think this is reflected by the fact that the back end of this mouse feels extremely similar to the back end of the G Pro. So uh, the fact that they basically kept this shape from the 502 when they made the G Pro makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I don't think uh, there's really a problem with it in that sense. It's just odd how the width here interacts with the width here at that point on the mouse and the way that the thumb buttons are sculpted um, and the angle that the mouse feels like it wants to sit in your grip based off of how this curve on the right side interacts with the, the bulk of, of how it rests against your thumb on the left. It feels like it wants to twist the mouse kind of counterclockwise looking down uh, to push against your pinky knuckle. And if you try to twist it the other way, twist it kind of clockwise like this, so that it actually fills up the base of my thumb, you can see it's, it's massively crooked and uh, not at all comfortable to use. So there's very much this kind of awkwardness in the way the overall shape works for me, which just isn't there on the G Pro even. So 
Yeah, and, and you can actually see, I think, what's causing that because the two sides here are not symmetrical. Uh, this side is cut in more than this side is. So if, if this side over here was cut the same way that this side is, then I, I do feel the mouse would, would be more ergonomic, would, would fit better. Um, but I don't understand what it is about this idea of wanting to cut away material here that that seems to, to make the mouse more ergonomic. Like, okay, that's not fair. I, I could totally understand it if you, if you wanted to widen the mouse as it moves towards the front, because having a narrower back works a bit more intuitively as your fingers spread out like this. Um, but if you if you want kind of a narrower front end, then you kind of want a bit more space at the back to sort of fill up your hand and support your your knuckles so that your fingertips can can come in towards the front and still feel like um, your hand has enough support under it. Whereas this shape doesn't do that because it doesn't give enough space here, enough support for your, your ring and pinky fingers to really get that effect. Whereas even the, the 518 with the ring finger rest, it genuinely gets a lot closer to that feeling. So. I don't know, it's, I guess it's just a bit of a peculiarity, um, and it's one of those things where before I, before I mained the 403, I owned a 502 for about a month, this was many, many years ago at this point, and I've always had the same commentary about the shapes, which is that I always felt that the front end of the 403 was a lot better, uh, and I, and I preferred and how it how it supported the base of my thumb here but i always thought that the hump of the 502 i.e the basilisk i.e the g pro wireless was much nicer so honestly if i guess i'd be curious to hear from people who prefer this hump to this one and um what is it about this shape that makes you prefer it? Because in my mind, I've always felt that a G703 with the hump from a G Pro wireless transplanted onto it would be virtually a, a perfect shape for me. Um, but uh, for whatever reason, all the ergo mice that have this kind of humps really seem to struggle to get the front ends right these days. Yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd be interested to hear what you guys think on, on this topic because, you know, being such a common shape, hopefully a lot of you have uh, experience with it and, and can chime in. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.